Okay, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taza Wolf from the GMS New Jersey camp. And um, I was actually having conversation. You know, I was out here at the park just walking, you know, just to walk a trail, get, get some meditation going. And um, the conversation was a good conversation because, you know, it deals with the word. And, and what was being said was, you know, us brothers of the whole four elect, we, we, we have to, you know, for the brothers who teach, all right, and, and prophesize, we have to be like water that flows from, you know, uh, you know, that, you know, scriptures say be as like living water. So we have to be like water that, that flows off a rock of a river, you know, that flows off a, a mountain, you know, that constantly flows. And uh, our elders apostles here at Great Millstone always teach us that if, if, if we want the Lord to hurry up and deliver us, then why wouldn't we make haste in this work, you know, or be fervent in this truth? You know, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a deal that, that we have to work for, which is the kingdom. All right. We have to work for the kingdom, and it's a. And if you look spiritually, all right. And this lesson is for those of the whole four elect. You know, this work got to get put out, and this work is. It is, but people have to wake up. All right, they have to hear this word by a preacher, which is one of the Lord's anointed, referring to Jeremiah three and fifteen. I will give you passes according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And you can see today that there's a lot of people waking up to this truth, you know, and the Lord is using our apostles and elders here at Great Millstone to push 100% truth so that none of the gospel is hidden. You know, the mysteries of the scriptures is being revealed, you know, because why? We're in the time of revelations being revealed. All right. So I want to make this quick. Lord willing, I hope edifying. You know, like I said, it drew me to this word furrent. You know, some, you know, maybe I titled the lesson something around the lines of being of uh, water that flows from a river or water that constantly flows from a drain. When you have water that flows from a drain, it's like until that drain get cut off, it's infinity. It just pours out, pours out, pours out, pours out. And you can see that with the word today, you know. So this is Romans 12 and 11, not slothful in business furrent in spirit serving the Lord now slothful which you know slothful means to be lazy and when you look it up uh, this is a Greek word okonoros okonoros all right it says sluggish slothful backward it says uh, tardy you know when you late you know if we late if we're late you know, to uh, a certain appointment, what happens? You might can't get in, all right? Say if you late for school and you may have tardiness going on as, uh, you know, as your report. And now to deal with your tardiness, they may say, you know what? You can't get in here this time, you know? So how much more getting into the kingdom? We got to work for this. Indolent, it says irksome, you know, it's irksome, you know, to someone that when it comes to doing the works and they're not passionate about this truth or firing in the spirit, then it's going to irk them. Oh, I got to do a show. Oh, I got to do a lesson. If you feel that way, then really you're not a man of the Lord. You know, you're not a prophet of the Lord. You know, it says grievous, slothful, you know, so not slothful in business, not looking at this business of the Lord to be grievous. All right. So it's a must that we not be lazy, man. Um, through scriptures here, slothful is Matthew 25 and 26. It says, His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strawed. All right, so a servant, if your servant, like for an example, us brothers, man, you know, we want, you know, uh, a good woman, if a woman comes our way, you know, put it like that, you know, if you a brother that, you know, really have no need of a woman right now cool but every man wants a 
a servant, a woman that could serve, you know, a woman that that's of the spirit the, that the Lord teaches us through the scriptures, you know, which we're going to get in the kingdom. But say if this woman doesn't do what you say, you know, say for an example, you just ask something small, you know, get this done before I come home because I'm going to get right to it. And then when you get home and she ain't never did it, you're going to be mad. You're going to be pissed off. So how much more us brothers, all right, serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? You know, Yahweh Shai asked Peter three times, if he loved me, he said, Peter, you love me? He said, yeah, Lord, feed my sheep, you know? Peter, you love me? Yeah, Lord, feed my sheep. Peter, you love me? Yeah, Lord, feed my sheep, you know? So it's important to have that spirit. And if you ain't got it, pray for it, you know? If you feel that what you slacking or you feel like, you know, you, you being distracted, you gotta pray. You gotta want this thing. You know, this is what we want, you know? And I'm just a, a brother striving in the truth, trying to do my part, that's all. You know, hoping that the Lord seen, deems my right, my uh, works to be righteousness, man. You know, but I wanna stress, the inward part of you is that you gotta want this, man. Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. Right? Okay, Romans 12 and 11, that's where we at. Now, Philippians 3 and 1, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for your, but for you it is safe. You know, so doing the works of the Lord is not grievous. You know? So, alright, it says, not slothful in business, furring in spirit, serving the Lord. Now that word furring, you know. Matter of fact, let me go into the blue letter first, a furrant, which means to be hot, you know? And Elder Apostle Sahar always bring the scripture out about being hot and cold, or being lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, the Lord gonna splew you out, as it is written. It says, to boil you, to boil you with heat, be hot, use of water, use of boiling anger, love, zeal, for what is good or bad, etc. Furrant in spirit, said of zeal, for what is good. You know, it's that zeal, that spirit that's on you, that drives you and motivates you to do what it is that is good. You know, it says um, to be hot. You know, you want to be on fire in this truth, or at least strive to be. You know, may not be on fire 24 7, but for the most part, you know. You on fire, man. It says uh, glow. Ooh, you want that glow. You know, brothers want spiritual powers. You know, where it starts with the spirit of the fervent spirit toward Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It starts there, you know, having that glow. Now, be fervent. Now, I did a quick Google search on it. Fervent. It says having or displaying a passionate intensity. Ooh, passionate intensity. Those are key words there. It says hot, burning, or glowing. You know, so that glowing spirit that 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 shows forth through your face, you know, through your eyes. When somebody say, yo, it's a glow about you, bro. That's because you have that fervent spirit in you, that passionate intensity toward Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So let's go back to it. It says Romans 12 and 11, not slothful in business furring in spirit serving the Lord we serving the Lord by serving each other uh, each and one of us brothers in his truth and also by doing what the Lord commanded us to do is prophesize you know and anything that come against that we have to endure that through our sufferings uh, Paul said also uh, uh, give thou body as a living sacrifice you know matter of fact is it up here yep this is um, Romans 12 and 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. So what is our reasonable service, being service of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? It's to give our bodies as a living sacrifice. And that sacrifice goes a long way. All right, sacrificing and doing the works of the Lord, being fervent in the spirit, that passionate intensity spirit that just drives you to do a show. You know, drives you to study, drives you to watch the apostles and elders, brothers lessons to learn, that driven spirit in you to learn, um, you know, sacrificing as if even down to the end, 
where to endure in this truth, you might have to be put to death. You know, it's a sacrifice. It's a ho it's holy, meaning you're separate from the rest. You have the elect, acceptable unto Yahweh. These are the acceptable things that a Yahweh uh, desire in, in us. You know, we're in the flesh with debtors to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, and we only paying back what we owe. It says, which is your reasonable service. Now, let me put in this real quick, furrant. And there's a few scriptures here. Now we read Romans 12 and 11. Let's read Acts in 18 and 25. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he specked and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. All right. So because he was fervent in the spirit, he specked and taught diligently. The key word there is diligently. And brothers know the precept that you think of when you hear diligently. As the scriptures say, make your, uh, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. It says, the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. All right, because John taught the repentance, coming back. He paved the way before Yahweh Shai came on the scene. Uh, there was another one in here. Uh, or that might have been it. 1 Peter 4 and 8, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. All right. Uh, I think that was the point. So hopefully, I hope this lesson was edifying. I'm going to make, I'm going to stop it there. Uh, oh, I had another scripture, Salakia. Let me bring this out. This is in Psalms. Psalms 1 and 1. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsels of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You hear that vocab? Because <laughs> you're a scornful man, okay? You sit in that seat of the scornful, you know? You sit in that seat of the ungodly. Yahweh Shai never walked around and scoffed anybody, all right? He just taught the word, okay? And the men that followed him just taught the word. They didn't go around scoffing people, you know? demonizing people, uh, you know, being attached to them. They did their own business. All right, Yahweh Shai told his mother and father, I'm about my father's business. So the men that follow Yahweh Shai, we're all about Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai's business. And that's it. Whatever business you got, go and do your thing. Go do your thing. We we doing the, the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai's business. That's what we concerned about. Verse two, but his delight is in the law of Yahweh and in his law do if he meditate day and night. Now here's the point, verse three. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So we wanna be a tree planted by the rivers because that tree is constantly gonna be watered. You know, it's like, you know, it's gonna constantly grow. He's gonna live because you're being watered, man. So, and he that be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You know, we want to be a, 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 a tree planted of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that bring forth good fruit. Fruit that's edible. Fruit that they can, you know, that the Lord can eat from. You know, and who's eating? The elect. Those who not woken yet, but will be awoken. They come to your channel and they could get something. You know, they can get something and learn from. And keep it moving, right? Keep pushing. It says, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So whatever that man do, the Lord is going to be in favor of to allow him to prosper. It says, the ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. You know, you're like that, that rubble, that rubbish, or that stubble, that, that shaft that falls from the mountain. When the Lord blows it, that shit come tumbling down, you know. And it was meaningless, you know. Anyway, verse 5. It says, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of righteousness. For Yahweh knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So, Lord willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.